Hey everybody in the VC, it's Matt, and I am here to do another Beach Boys review. We're getting really close here. We've got uh, just two albums to go. So uh, today I'm going to review the second to last uh, penultimate album. But first, on the last review I did, the third to last album, Summer in Paradise by the Beach Boys, I said that this album came out in 1992 and they did not release another album of new material until 2012, so a 20 year gap there. But I also said that there was an out al there is an album in between this one and their their last or at least their latest album. And that would be the album we're gonna review today. Came out August 19th in 1996, Stars and Stripes Volume 1 by the Beach Boys. And the reason uh, there's some question is I, I guess you can count this as a Beach Boys album. They sing background vocals on it. They don't play on it. Uh, the lead vocals are by various and sundry country western singers of the day. And uh, so, yeah, we'll get into that in just a second. Whereas this didn't chart at all, and it's the only one of their albums that didn't ever chart, this one did chart, but it didn't do very great. It got to number 101 on the U.S. Billboard chart. I don't think it charted at all in England, which is kind of strange because the latter-day Beach Boys albums kind of tended to do a little better in England than they do in America. It did get to number 12 on the U.S. country charts and number 11 on the Canadian country charts. I'm not sure how much, how many units you have to sell to do that, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but sounds like it wasn't a very good thing, and we'll get to that too later. Uh, this was, um, oh, and also... Going back to this again, made a mistake last time. I said this was the only Beach Boys album that never came out on vinyl, that only came out on CD. But that's incorrect because this also only came out on CD. And as far as I've been able to tell or find, it's never been released on vinyl. Uh, maybe there was some super limited edition or something, but I don't, I don't think so. Being 1996, probably not. So there we go. This is... Um, Another sad milestone, because this is Carl Wilson's last album. He uh, passed away in 1998. This came out in 1996, like I said. So this is the last Beach Boys album with any involvement from Carl, sadly. The good news is Brian produces this uh, with a guy named Joe Thomas. So it's sort of a Brian's back. This was uh, when Brian had gotten remarried and gotten rid of Dr. Landy and was starting his solo career and kind of bouncing back uh, to the degree that he has bounced back to what he is today and touring on his own and so forth and getting back into music. So that's the great news is that Brian was back and he was excited to be producing the album. As I said in this review, this is the only Beach Boys album that has no involvement from Brian Wilson whatsoever and it's also not a very good album. But this one he produces... Like I said, the band don't play on this. It's studio musicians. They recorded this. I believe all of it was recorded in Nashville. Some of it in uh, one or two songs, maybe in Texas. I don't know if they recorded any of it in California or not. I looked at the liner notes and uh, can't can't recall off the top of my head now. But these are country western stars, and so the idea was to do an album of country western stars covering Beach Boys songs, which sounds like a cash grab and doesn't sound like the greatest idea, but from a business standpoint, I guess it does, because maybe even Mike Love realized after this that the public had no real interest in new Beach Boys music, and that without Brian around, and Dennis Dad and Carl, you know, and not in great health, that he just couldn't come up with the songs of the Beach Boys days of old, because he just doesn't have the talent of the rest of the band, and that the public basically didn't care about the Beach Boys as far as anything other than an oldies act by that point, which was also, I'm sure, true in 1996. So from just a purely business standpoint, I guess it does kind of make sense to say, hey, you know, people get older that were people around the 60s, they're older, and a lot of people when they grow up, they start listening to boring music, including country music, and so maybe we call in some current country stars to do covers of our songs and Maybe it'll be a hit and we'll make some money, I guess was the thinking behind that. 
And you can't really argue with that, I guess, because a lot of rock and roll stars, I think the guy from Aerosmith made a country album. Uh, the Hootie and the Blowfish guy, I think, makes country albums. Uh, never paid much attention to Hootie and the Blowfish, much one way or the other. But I think uh, Robin Zander from Cheap Trick made a country album. So I guess the Beach Boys were kind of ahead of the curve in that, that manner. Uh, country music is not a music that I am a fan of, by and large, with, with very, very limited exceptions. It's uh, basically right down there with rap and techno music for me, just not something that I care for at all. But, um, you know, a lot of people like it, and so that, that's great for them. But what else? Uh, Last Carl's album. Uh, so, yeah. Didn't do great on the charts as far as the overall, but um, a lot of uh, country western stars of the day. Some of these must have been flash in the pans, or maybe not, since I don't really follow country music, but a lot of these people on here I've never heard of, so I'm thinking that some of these are people that had uh, a hit or two 20 years ago and then sort of faded off into obscurity. Or maybe not. Maybe they're still around making records and having hits. It's just that a lot of people on here that I've never heard of at all. But we'll get on to the tracks. And there are 12 tracks on this album. And there's actually a 13th. And we'll get to that at the end of the album. So, um, first track is... Uh, and these are all old 60s Beach Boys classics. And it goes without... Or it should go without saying, I guess I should say, that none of these are anywhere come anywhere close to matching the original Beach Boys versions. Uh, all of these songs are classics, and uh, maybe with one exception, and uh, just great songs with the original Beach Boys version, and uh, none of these covers come anywhere close to matching the wonder or the magic of the originals. But let's see if they're any good. So Don't Worry Baby is the first song, uh, one of the great Beach Boy songs of all times, one of my favorite Beach Boy songs. This one's done by someone named Lori Morgan, who I actually have heard of, though I never heard any of her music. She's actually a very nice lady. I talked to her on the phone about a year ago, so I'm thinking, uh, I remember hearing the name back in the 90s or whatever, so I guess she was having hits then, but she's not having hits anymore, apparently, because I had to do a story on her. She was playing a little bar in uh, rural Texas, and uh, I guess her name's still big enough from the hits that she had 20-whatever years ago that she's still a draw of some sort. She's just not big enough draw to be playing the big concert halls anymore. But I had to call her on the phone and do an interview with her. I didn't go to the show, but I did talk to her. A very nice lady, and I knew that she had worked with the Beach Boys on this project, so kind of talked Beach Boys with her, and she said she had a lot of fun, that she was a big fan of them when she was a little kid in the 60s. She would have been, you know, I don't know, a kid, but just a big fan, and her dad and mom were fans, and so it was a, a, a lot of fun to meet them and work with them, and a really nice lady. Anyway, as far as her version of the song, she's got a nice voice, nice enough voice. It's a, it's a pretty, pretty good uh vocal arrangement and the other thing is that the music like I said is session musicians so it's not the Beach Boys playing these songs and it's not the original backing tracks from the 60's versions it's uh, I guess Nashville session musicians just uh, doing the songs so musically not as good as the original certainly not vocally as good as the original but Laurie Morgan's vocals are okay it's a little bit countryish, which is what you would uh, I guess hope for and expect from a country artist. The original song, you know, is a 10. Her version, it's all right. I'm going to give it a four. It's not anything great, which basically can be said for all 12 of the songs on this CD, by the way. Song number two, Little Deuce Coop, another great Beach Boys song. This is done by someone named James House, who uh, never have heard of. Not, not a great singer. So you've got the Beach Boys backing him up with the harmonies and, of course, the classic Beach Boys harmonies and the great voices that they all have. And here's this guy that's not really a very good singer. It just doesn't blend together very well with the rest of the band. Uh, it's got a 
nice guitar bit in the middle of the song. The drums are terrible. They're just applauding, just boom, 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 boom throughout the whole song. I give it a two. It, it's, you know, song number three, 409. Uh, this is done by someone named Junior Brown. Never heard of him either. That sounds more like a blues singer name than a country singer to me. Guy's got a real deep bass voice, kind of like mine, unfortunately. Maybe even deeper, though. The, the pace of the song is again again not a not a great singer here and the beach boys harmonies behind them it just doesn't really mesh that well the pace of the song is too slow for the subject matter because the original is is an energetic it's about hot rods and cars and all this and it's clips along at a good pace in this version it just sort of she's real fine my just just sort of a plotting too slow of pace um Got a little bit of a countryish guitar playing through it, which is nice, but overall, a two. Song number four, Long Tall Texan, which has always been just an okay song anyway. This is by somebody named Doug Supernaw, and I'll, I'll let you see the if you're interested in the lineup and the people that sing. Never heard of him. I uh, only know how to pronounce his name properly because they say his name in the song. This is a uh, kind of a countryish, like if you're in a bar and a country band's playing in a bar, just a just a amateur band in a bar type sound. It kind of a not that great of a song, even the Beach Boys version. And originally, it's it's um, a little bit of a gimmick song, and it's four minutes and two seconds, so four minutes and three seconds, so it's about two minutes too long anyway kind of wears out its welcome. Uh, I give it a 3.5. It's it's okay. We move on to song number five, I Get Around. Uh, again, one of the great Beach Boys, one of my favorite Beach Boys songs. Uh, this is by someone named Sawyer Brown, another person I've never heard of. Uh, sounds like Bruce Springsteen, sort of, whoever this guy is. So just imagine Bruce Springsteen fronting the Beach Boys, which... <laughs> doesn't really um, make for a good mix, but it kind of works here. It, it's 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 kind of a fun uh, version, nowhere near as good as the original again, but uh, it's fun. I give it a I give it a four point five on that one. Uh, next up, "Be True to Your School" by Toby Keith, who's someone I have heard of. I don't know that I've ever heard any of his actual music. Uh, vocally. He does a good job. He's he's, he's uh, uh, at least here. He's uh, does uh, delivers pretty good vocal. Backing music though is is just terrible. Just just uh, be true to your school is one of my absolute favorite Beach Boys songs. I just love that song, and it's 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 fun and it's just um, early '60s and and upbeat and energetic. Uh, the the music here, the session players or whoever's playing on it, it's just just not not a good good blend of music but the guy's voice is okay so I'll give it a 2.5 and uh, we'll come back to that because there's a point I want to make about most of these songs on here song number seven is fun 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 by someone named Ricky Van Shelton who I have also heard of but never heard any of his music so far as I know kind of a bluesy rock the vocals aren't great but okay problem is this is a uh, you know another great Beach Boy song, and this cover version is just pretty dull and lifeless. It's it's there, and there's not much you can say about it. So nothing really exciting or noteworthy about it. That is. So I'm going to give that a two. And anyone who's watched my videos knows that I'm not a big fan of cover versions anyway. I mean the Beatles could do them, but the Beatles are the Beatles, and a few other bands have done some really good cover versions, but they're pretty rare and far between. My take on a cover version is. If you want to do it in a concert, that's great. If you want to do it on a record, you know, you better be Beatle-type talent to be able to pull it off because you're not going to better most of these great songs unless you are. Or you better do something like Devo with Satisfaction and just go in some totally opposite direction and do something new and unique with the song. And none of the people on here really do that. They, they just These are pretty straight-ahead just covers of songs that were done much better originally throughout this album 
And that's generally what happens with cover versions, uh, rock, soul, country, whatever, it has been my experience. There are exceptions, but that's why I'm not a huge fan, of, never been a huge, huge fan of cover versions overall. So that was uh, fun, 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 that gets a two. Song number eight, Help Me Rhonda, T. Graham, T. Graham Brown, never heard of. Uh, this is probably my favorite song on the album. I'm going to give this uh, 4.75. It's the uh, barrel house boogie music behind it, just kind of chugs along, really energetic, kind of fun. Of course, it doesn't match the original, but it's it's uh, this guy's having fun. His, his uh, vocals are okay, a, not a great singer, but the... The band behind them works. Sounds like everyone's having fun and, and uh, nothing spectacular going on here, but just uh, just like sounds like they're having a fun day and just, just banging out the song. So that's probably the best one of the album. Song number nine is Warmth of the Sun, which is not only one of my favorite Beach Boys album uh, songs, but it's also one of my favorite songs of all time. I just that's just it's a special song. I love it. Willie Nelson sings this, which of course everyone knows who he is. I uh, don't deny his talent. He's written some great songs. He wrote Crazy for Patsy Cline, Pretty Paper. Never really been a fan of his, though obviously he's a, he's a talented guy, just not my cup of tea. But it just doesn't really work here. Uh, it's You've got the rich, soaring Beach Boy harmonies of Work of the Sun behind him, and then you've got Willie Nelson singing in his, you know, busted muffler carburetor voice the two don't mesh they do put a harmonica in in this that makes it a little gives a little bittersweet twinge and try to make it a little more countryish to a song that already had plenty of uh, bittersweet twinge uh, tinge to begin with um, it just doesn't work it, it almost works but it just it just doesn't make it if if Willie would have just done this by himself, playing the piano or playing an acoustic guitar and just not trying to sound like the Beach Boys, just trying to sound like himself singing this song. It might have worked, but trying to mix the lushness of the Beach Boys original with the sort of uh, rough-hewn tone of Willie Nelson, it just, just doesn't, doesn't, doesn't fit together. So... It's a good try though, I'll give it a three, and it probably could have worked if he would have done it a little bit differently. Song number 10, Sloop John B, which is one of, I think, uh, one or two songs that Joe actually likes on Pet Sounds. Uh, great song. Of course, this is done by someone named Colin Ray, who I've never heard of. Not much to say about this. The, the Beach Boys original, well, the Beach Boys didn't write the song. The song goes back to like the 20s or something, but the Beach Boys version is a great song. This one's just uh, mediocre, just really dull and draggy, uh, kind of flat cover version. I'm going to give it a one. Song number 11, I Can Hear Music by someone named Kathy Trocoli, or Trocoli, I guess like Broccoli with a T. Um... Again, not much to say about it. Just sort of a flat elevator music sounding cover of a great Beach Boys song. Give that a one, two. This girl um, kind of sounds like a guy when she's singing. A guy with a high voice, granted. But sounds more like a guy than a girl. But either way, she doesn't do a very good, good job there. That gets a one. Last song on the album is uh, song number 12 is Caroline No, which is uh, one of the best songs on Pet Sounds, uh, one that Joe never mentions because he only likes two songs on that album. He needs to clean his ears out, I think, and give that album another listen. But Caroline No, great, beautiful, wonderful song. This is done by someone named Timothy B. Smith. No idea who he is. Um... He actually sings, because uh, Brian sang, you know, the real one, and he sings kind of Beach Boyish sound to his voice, and it's, it's nice, but it's like a game attempt, but a pale imitation of the real thing. It, it lacks the magic and the innocence and the wonder of the, the real version, the Beach Boys version. But points for trying, I'll give it a 3.5. The um, 
Well, we'll get to that in a minute. So, so here you got the uh, cover, which I guess is okay cover. This has been out of print for quite a while, by the way. Uh, inside, there's your CD. There's your song listing, and there's also a booklet here of um, some notes about the band and the different people that the different country singers that play on it. So you got that. Um, so going back to one thing that applies to many of these, a lot of these things, and I think why this really didn't work, because you see that's volume one. They had hoped, I guess, that this would be a success, and they wanted to do a volume two. And, uh, you know, if it would have worked, it would have been a nice little money stream for them, I guess. But there never, never was to be a volume two. And one reason, I think, is that a lot of these people, a lot of the music sounds doesn't sound country music and if you're a country fan I mean if you're a country fan I can see where you might be excited like hey old Beach Boys songs done country style well they don't really sound country style they sound either kind of barroom garage you know barroom rock and roll type stuff or just just basically kind of watered down rock and roll and there's a little bit of country tinge here and there that uh, peeks through but it's pretty far few and far between most of the people here I'm imagining when they sing on their regular country records they do it with the uh, hick voice or the twang in their voice or whatever but a lot of them just sing pretty straightforward here and I don't know if they do that regularly or not because like I said most of these people on here I have no idea who they are I haven't heard their regular records but so if you're a country fan and you hear country people are doing Beach Boys songs, oh boy, but then you're going to listen to it and say, well, that doesn't sound like country. It sounds like that damn rock and long-haired rock and roll hippie crap. And if you're a rock and roll fan, well, it doesn't sound country-ish, but it just sounds like pretty tame and tepid, uh, watered-down rock and roll, most of it. Uh, there's a song or two on here that's okay. That's really not a whole lot bad you can say about this album there's really not a whole lot good you can say about it it's um, I guess background music it's not something that I think I'm gonna go back to and li I've listened to it three I've had this for a while I've listened to it four or five times um, every time I listen to it it's pretty much same reaction that yeah it's it's, it's okay I guess overall I guess I'd give this a maybe a three the um, they did record a song with Tammy Wynette doing a version of in my room which was supposed to be slated for volume two which of course like I said never happened I think it ended up coming out on one of her regular albums and I'm not sure if she's even still alive to tell you the truth because it's 20 years ago and I, she was pretty old then it's um, it's okay I, I went to YouTube and listened to the video of it a couple of times. I give it a three. That's another, uh, you know, great masterpiece of the Beach Boys. Her version of it, it's Tammy Wynette singing in my room. It's it's fine, I guess, if you like that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, what did I say overall? I gave this album a three, and um, that's pretty much it. We got... Uh, one more Beach Boys album to go, their last one, or at least their last one so far, and that would be between when to when this was released and that one came out would be a 16-year gap. We'll find out next time if the wait was worth the wait, was worth it. Uh, you know what I'm saying.